Okay, so the documentaries have all the incidents, or most of the incidents, in there. There's another one called UFO Files. UFO Files um, has all the cases as well. So number one, the Roswell incident is a good. There were two downed saucers in the Roswell incident. There was another one in Kingman, Arizona, and there's many others. Next, the Malmstrom, Malmstrom Air Force Base sighting, uh, and, and, and all these incidents are in the, the documentaries. They're in the Out of the Blue, they're in the other one. So the Out of the Blue is the main one, Out of the Blue, James Fox. The next one is 50 Years of Denial, 50 Years of Denial. And there's another one called, let me see, 50 Years of Denial. The other one is called I Know What I Saw, which is also by James Fox. And then there's the UFO Files. Each one of the episodes talks about specific incidents. There are each specific incidents. And these are only the best well-known incidents, which are the real incidents, uh, not the lesser known, which are also incidents. Just because an actress in Hollywood is a lesser known actress does not mean that she's not a human being that has hair and has eyes and she's a real person. Just lesser known person. In that same way, there's other UFO cases which are lesser known, but doesn't mean that that's not a person there. There's still, there's still uh, you know, beings there that have visited, maybe just a shorter time. Uh, the next one is 1952. Washington DC flyover a pretty important incident actually where they were trying to contact us or give us signs right over the Capitol building in 1952 in Washington DC and then saber jets were scrambled in and scrambling the saber jets these things took off at 40,000 miles per hour and a saber jet this is the 1950s a saber jet travels about 450 miles an hour that's its maximum speed it's pretty high speed back in the day, 450 miles an hour is pretty fast. These things took off at 40,000 miles per hour. Then the Sable Jets were flying around for a while, then they landed again and uh, said, you know, we saw a little something, but they took off. And then they landed again, and then they came back and were going around again. The Sable Jets were scrambled again to try to intercept them and try to make visual contact. They took off again at about 30 to 40,000 miles an hour again. So that's called the Washington, and that incident is called the Washington, D.C. merry-go-round. Because like a merry-go-round, turning around in circles, you know, oh, they're back. Okay, we're going to take a look at them. Oh, they're gone. Head back to base, uh, land, you can't stay in the air forever, I guess you got to land. And then, oh, they're back again, a scramble again. And so this, it's called the Washington, D.C. merry-go-round, 1952. The next incident is uh, Bentwaters. Let's go with the Bentwaters. This is 1980. 1980, Bentwaters, England. It's a nuclear, again, another nuclear incident. It's quite a few nuclear incidents. The Malmstrom was a nuclear, too. A Bentwaters, a nuclear uh, missile installation, 1980. And uh, there were sightings, a lot of strange light sightings, and they shine beams down on the ground. There's guys that went under the woods, and they fall, saw a triangular, triangular off object in the woods hovering around with some strange writing on it and stuff. It was shining around, and then it fucking took off in the air above the clouds and took off. The next night is when the real incident happened. They came back again, shining lights all over. Our people, the humans, went out and, and uh, you know, looked at them. They had whole lines of, 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 of military police looking into what this was. And then in, in a field, in a clearing, they came down and three beings in these round kind of... Stephen Greer also knows all about all these sightings. So does Nick Pope, so do many others. The, the, these round thing, like in, in these round spheres, you could see these beings sitting there trying to talk to us. Uh, probably about the nuclear weapons, since it was a nuclear weapons base, how dangerous, how bad these nuclear weapons are. And then one of our admirals or officers went up and, and, and was talking with them and interacting in some way for quite some time. The area was cordoned off, and uh, the other people were told to get out of here, to, to go away, get out of here, and it just had a couple people around the perimeter who were looking at the situation. That's called the Rendlesham Bentwaters incident. Highly, highly documented, lots of officers uh, all documented what it was and cover up attempts to ma later make these officers seem like they're crazy. They poisoned them with LSD and stuff like that to make them seem like they're messed up. Uh, but a lot of officers, the Caban guy, a lot of officers 
um, know all about it, and it's called the Rendles Rendlesham Incident. You know, these these are Air Force officers. They're not going to be going out and hallucinating out in the uh, jungle and, and, you know, playing with themselves and playing with flashlights. You know, they really saw something, and they reported on, on it, and they went out there, and they saw it. They're not going to make up something like that. Shh. And so the next incident... Um, the California, it's all in the out of the blue, the California, over the coast of California, Monterey, there's, uh, it's actually relates to nuclear weapons as well. A lot of this stuff really does relate to nuclear weapons, and some of these beings have a real issue with these nuclear weapons, and say it's not okay, and this is a recurring theme, it's not okay to have these weapons, they're extremely dangerous, and, and they, encourage, they want, encourage us to, to shut down these weapons. This, is very, this shows the peaceful influence they want us to ascend to, you know, be positive, ascend in consciousness, and not to be like gangsters or thugs, but ascend in consciousness, not to use weapons, and of course not nuclear weapons, against each other. And this is also the theme of a movie, The Day the Earth Stood Still, in the 1950s, which made about, uh, you know, all the weapons came out uh, against the flying saucer, which was parked there, and then a robot came out of the flying saucer and just, just neutralized all these weapons of the U.S. Army and all the armies were, were melted, melted and neutralized the weapons. Then they came out and made peaceful contact and talked about our planet and everything, how they're guiding civilization and everything like that. And, okay, so the next incident, yes, over the coast of Monterey, the nuclear weapons base, they fired off a test firing of, of, a, of a missile. And so this guy who recounts it, he, Doc was the guy, uh, he was on, on the base there in, in, in charge of these weapons, in charge of the launch. And he says uh, he was looking through the thing and he could see objects coming in and were firing beams at the weapon to see if they can shoot this, this nuclear weapon out of orbit. And they eff effectively did shoot again and again to get this nuclear weapon. Uh, and it was disintegrating and shooting down this nuclear weapon. And his officer said, what the hell was that? Were you doing something funny over there with the camera, or what, what is this? And he said, no, sir. Uh, that's what we saw over there. It looks to me like a UFO. And then he said, you know, you're never allowed to talk. You're not going to talk about this again. You know, as far as this, this case is closed, don't tell anyone about this incident. And then some other men came in, men in black type thing, came in and confiscated the reels, all of the footage that, that showed it. Came and confiscated, took away the footage, so nobody was... Uh, Nobody publicized uh, that incident. Also, the Roswell, which was 1947, so that one was 1970s or 1980s. Malmstrom was 1980s, and Randallson was 1980, exactly 1980. Roswell was 1947, very well known. It was two saucers that crashed at Roswell. Most of the stuff that, cra that was actually crashed or able to retrieve something was brought to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base and some of it then to Area 51, where it was really opened up and reverse engineered, because Area 51 is really secretive, even to this day. It's very secretive. Wright-Patterson is out in the open. A lot of trucks driving around, a lot of people out in the open. So Area 51 is much more secretive, because it's so remote. In the middle of vast, vast deserts, it takes you hours just to drive through open desert to get to the very uh, kind of remote base. So it's, it's mostly at Wright-Patterson and... Um, the Area 51. Because of the internet, everybody knows about stuff. Everybody knows about it. Only people that have been fed the mainstream media have not, you know, not done any research, so they don't know anything about it since they haven't done any research. Okay, a couple other incidents. There's many incidents like this. It's usually a sighting, a landing, actual contact, like uh, the Rendlesham incident was actual contact. They saw the, the, saw the, the stuff, they saw the, these vehicles, then they actually landed and made actual contact when, and spoke to people, and then took off and left at the end. There's many of these incidents, but those incidents, and each of these incidents, are, those incidents are very carefully uh, picked as to be legit incidents, they're not uh, fakes or hoaxes. So by you know, studying these, we can see that it is going on, it's real, and uh, you know, it's something that they want covered up because uh, you know, people would be extremely interested in it, but now because of the internet, it's loose. The stuff is all loose on the internet. So again, people would think like, oh, do you think uh, aliens could be here? That has nothing to do with reality. That's a subjective decision. Do you think that aliens could exist? That has nothing to do with the scientific evidence. The scientific evidence, by looking at these cases, so that we know as a fact 
that not do they exist only of course they exist we, we know, we've seen it as a fact but they have landed in many many cases the, the travis walton as well and the betty and barney hill incident and the gulf breeze florida incident with ed walters the contract building contractor so those are three more legitimate incidents these are ce3 or contact three and so these are incidents in which they tried to abduct people or got into a fight or an argument with people or they you know some kind of an altercation actually took place with the beings coming out stepping and shooting a weapon at you people said whoa no get back to the car and they, you know, they see so much resistance you know this is not a really good guy to abduct let's maybe go for a woman or somebody who's easier to capture so these are actual uh, capture and abduct and they, they do experiments and look at the people ask questions or try to interact there's many different things that would go on. But some of these incidents turn quite bad because the people are really panicked out of their freaking mind. So in many cases, there's a fight ensues, even gunfire. Some of these creatures have been killed in the gunfire because some people had guns and defended themselves. Um, Ed Walters went underneath his, his big rig truck as the, as, as the incident was happening. This is another case from Gulf Breeze, Florida. Now, these are hand-picked incidents which are are written about in books and you can you can see these incidents so, so three more incidents okay Travis Walton number one number two Betty and Barney Hill the very first uh, abduction case in 1962 and the third one is Gulf Breeze Florida uh, Pensacola Gulf Breeze Florida there's a building contractor Ed Walters who was uh, con a building contractor in his own home I mean contractor at work and then came back to his own home in the home there were some very strange incidents. He started seeing these lights. They were interacting with him and trying to do an abduction. They were trying to actually take him uh, and, and, and pull him up there. And he was holding on his door frame. So this is a very scary incident. He was holding on his door frame as they were trying to suck him up there with this, with a blue beam. And uh, he documented it, had a lot of crazy things happening. And then people tried to go into his house and plant fake little models of saucers and make fake photography to make it look like wow look at this model that this guy has he's obsessed with ufos he's built the model it's not a real photograph look at this model and so they came and tried to muddy up the waters to make it look like he's crazy you know he's 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 got too much time on his hands he's he, imagining these things he's making toy models and stuff and holding them up and taking pictures and saying the aliens are coming down look at this great shot but really we've discovered a model it's a fake so that happened after the incident to try to discredit his incident make it seem like it's bullshit nobody pay attention to this it's crap the guy's a lunatic he's building models and making movies of alien ships and so they did all that to try to, to make it look ha 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 and make everybody laugh at him to not take the incident seriously because that was, was really getting out of hand, that incident. The amount of abduction attempts, the connection with the psychology, they were projecting images in his head and all kind of things to try to get him to, to, to do the abduction correctly and stuff. And so that is, I believe that's the 80s, and that is Gulf Breeze, Florida. And there's, there's many incidents like this, and because of the incidents we know as a, as a fact, it's not, it's not a, uh, a theory, it's not uh, asking someone like, oh, you know, do you think they, do you think they could exist? Um, you know, and then, oh, my subjective opinion, maybe they can, no, it's nothing about that. Most of our technology with computers is based upon what was recovered at Roswell and other crashes. They had these silicon chips and, and, and the, these, these circuitry, which was new to us. We didn't have that kind of silicon circuitry with electrical bursts going through it. So we reverse engineered and all the computers, remember there were no computers before 1950 and 1960s. There was no computers before that. Why? The computers started in the 1970s and 1980s when they figured out how to reverse engineer this stuff and started making uh, their own computers based upon the computers and this technology that they found. So all of a sudden, so fast, we have an explosion of computer technology. Very strange, huh? In the 80s, in the 90s, and now just an explosion. Everybody has computers. Very, very, everybody's got them. Okay, they reverse engineered all this from what, what they found at Roswell and the other crashes. So all these incidents show us, and you know, it's not, you know, it's not like, oh, what do you think about it? It has nothing to do with what you're thinking about. What you're thinking about has nothing to do with what's really out there. Uh, what's really out there is the actual incidents, uh, actual incidents of, of proof of these different cases. 
there's many different incidents. Some are kind of hostile, some are not hostile. Uh, landings, some uh, trying to meet people, some trying to disengage the nuclear weapons. Other times they tried to meet president. A lot of presidents have had uh, actual sightings because they have tried to basically approach them and uh, and make positive contact. Okay, but what happens is we uh, as humans are so kind of dumbed down have military and ready to shoot with the military right away if you don't know what it is you know so much violence and stuff is what they got in return that, that they were really like oh my god do you really have to shoot at us i mean how unbelievably violent and dumb are you guys you really have to sh start shooting weapons at us we're trying to make some progress here and interact in a civilized manner so that's what they got in response for trying to make contact. So after a while, they just said, "Oh my God, it's just this, this, this is really, really difficult to do uh, to make make a positive, uh, you know, enlightened contact." And some of the movies take on these 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 questions as well. So that's what's going on. And because of the internet, it's loose. It's this this stuff is all out there. A lot of anybody who you know, like I said, disclosure has already happened. Disclosure has already happened. Anybody who wants to see the truth there, you can dig deep enough in, in one hour. In one hour of research, you can dig deep enough and see the truth. That's it. Uh, and so um, only only by being mind controls do they keep the people by saying, ha ha, you know, that's nothing, ha ha. You know, they have not done any research, and so they choose not to see it. There's a lot of things in the world that people choose not to see because they want not to see. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to see it. And if you don't want to hear it, you don't want to see it, well, you're never going to find truth. You're never going to know what the true truth is about a subject. But a lot of people that do want to know about it, you can research it and know about it. The important thing to understand is that there's no fear about this kind of thing because if they have better technology, if they wanted to destroy us, they could have done it by now. And none, almost none of the incidents are showing that they wanted to destroy us or burn us or drop bombs or nothing like that or implant something inside, implant, you know, into all the pop control the population, burn the people off. None of that has shown that. They're pretty peaceful, you know, pretty average, really, um, beings. Average beings that want to exist just the way we want to exist and, and make contact and make things, positive things happen, meet people and go places and eat food. And just, they're very similar to us in many ways. The technology is a little bit more advanced than our technology. Remember, not that much. It's not a million years advanced. It's just a little bit more advanced, just, you know, a couple hundred years more into the future. So they're actually quite similar to us. And our technology, since we've reverse engineered a lot of what they have, we have now at this point basically the same technology that they have. We have a lot of the same technology that they have. So you can think of it maybe as compared to the Mexicans in the time of Cabeza de Vaca or Columbus, you know, compared to the, the Spanish and the Columbus, you know. They had horses, they had silver helmets, you know, they had bow and arrows, they had guns. So they were close to the technology, but once they started interacting, the Mexicans also had horses, you know. They probably got horses and they got some guns and stuff, learned how the guns work. So it's not a leap of millions of years advanced. It's more like just your brothers which are slightly more advanced and have spaceships that can take off into the air today we have cars that go on the ground so it's not that much different it's just slightly advanced technology and advanced uh, spirituality so they're not killing each other the way some of we are still and uh, you know they're more spiritually advanced so they'll live hundreds and hundreds of years longer compared to poisoning your environment and, 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 and fighting wars and stuff. You're not going to live very long if you're poisoning your environment, fighting wars and stuff. So being spiritually advanced, you live a lot longer. You can develop amazing technology. Nobody's fighting with each other. You get along and do amazing things. It's a much better deal. And they've been trying to actually get us, uh, you know, to realize that. Um, and and we're, people are slowly realizing that, slowly waking up to that. But there's dark forces that make money from, from keeping people down and controlled. So, you know, they make a lot of money by keeping the enslavement systems going. So that's going on as well. Anyhow, that's the UFO thing. And there are documentaries. Number one, Out of the Blue by James Fox. Number two, uh, Fifty Years of Denial is a great documentary. Number three, UFO Files is a documentary movie. It's called UFO Files. And another one is called I Know What I Saw, also by James Fox. 
These are the UFO documentaries. There's also someone called Ancient Aliens. There's also Eric Van Daniken and many others. Ancient Aliens is a good one. The UFO Files is a really great one. And so you can learn about some of these incidents. And it, for people today, it's a hobby item or a trivial item. You know, by knowing that there's aliens, you're not going to make a million dollars. You know, it's just kind of a little hobby or something. So it's kind of a hobby item or a, a study research kind of item.